नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द डिस्कोर्स टुडे इज इट इज ए सीरीज ऑन विस्टम बेस्ड मेता टुडे वी विल डिस्कस the life of a person who literally lived this ideal of wisdom based metta or universal love now this was this is the story of the actual true story in the time of the buddha uh now the queen of kosambi was known to be a very virtuous and noble lady whose life and conduct matched her name her name was vishwa queen vishwamitra that is vishwamitra and she lived her name the friend of the universe vishwa mitra and her life reflected this ideal of goodwill love and friendliness at the same time she was known to be a very tough in her practice of spiritual life she would never never compromise in any manner and she was known to be a great devotee of the buddha and her husband was i mean because of probably her beauty she was the most beautiful woman of the time and also for her virtue the husband was completely uh, in love with her uh, it so happened that uh, when she was uh, in the motherly way she was pregnant lady and uh, after a long time she uh, became a, uh, she was in the motherly way so at that time and uh, any king who very much you see uh, <coughs> <coughs> had his mind not only over the uh, territory that she ruled and her husband ruled but over her too she was an evil king who did not believe in anything as uh, spiritual or moral he was a, a powerful military king he was known for his military expeditions everywhere so it so happened when she was in the friend uh, family way this king taking advantage of that situation uh he attacked the kingdom with a very large army and uh, so the husband had absolutely no other option because her uh, the city the capital city kosambi which is quite close to ilabad up to date that was surrounded totally and he was just on the door on the gateway of the of the city so he had to meet the enemy so he commanded his commander in chief to uh he said immediately stop this attack make use of the fourfold army that he had and so there was battle and uh, the king himself also got involved and in a battle uh, you see as it would happen 
the, the queen said, well, I too will go with you, wherever you go. The king, the, in a battle, you see, there is always a retreat and attack. So, it so happened that the king had to go along with, the, uh, along with his army for some distance, maybe 50 miles or 100 miles or whatever. And um, so she, he kept her in a, uh, in a safe place, what he thought to be safe, and said, well, if I lose, I will, uh, you see, put this flag, the red flag, and from that you will know that I have lost the battle. And you therefore somehow manage to get out of the of the capital, of the place where she was kept. So battle went on for days together for quite some time, and at last the king lost, and uh, he had the uh, red flag raised to inform the queen that you must now run away. So this is how the queen was, she, she literally left the place and uh, she was uh, running. She was going from place to place, hiding from place to place, somehow, because she was carrying a baby and uh, she had to protect the child and the baby was supposed to be the king, next king. So her responsibility for the neck, uh, for the child, better go here and there, and the king's men, his secret service men, were after her. They went about everywhere searching, and then at last they found her out in a village, and then uh, this, the queen was arrested. She was brought to the capital, which was now, um, uh, you see, in the uh, occupation of the uh, enemy, um, enemy army. So, <coughs> the king now made certain proposals to the queen. He said, look, I will make you my chief queen if you agree to marry me. The queen absolutely forthright said, no, I will not marry you. You can do anything you like with me. Then the, he tempted in so many ways, in so, I mean, all kinds of ways he tempted her, but she refused. She kept on refusing and she would not budge. So, at last the king got very angry. She said, I will finish her so that she will not have a child who will in future probably attack my country. So, he ordered her to be burnt alive. That was one of the punishments those days, apparently, when you lose a war. That is how uh, the husband was already dead. The king uh, had been killed in that battle. So that is how the, uh, the uh, you see, the king had lost the, her kingdom. Uh, lost his life and, her, and his kingdom. So, now, when she was ordered to be killed in that manner, she said, well, king, now that you have occupied my country and I don't have my, uh, I, I don't have any hold over my country, but let me tell you an ancient custom in this land, Jambu Deepa, in this Bharata, that an honorable king will not kill certain type of people. 
They say, we'll not kill a monk, we'll not kill a holy man, we'll not kill uh, religious people or children and women and so on. And sick people and all that. So I am now in that category, both a woman and sickly. So I am not subject to your order of being killed. The king got more angry, he says, come on, take these women away, straight away and finish her off. And the men, they had to obey the king, otherwise they will, be, they will lose their own lives. So, uh, she was now put right in the middle of a uh, type of punishment, with a horrible punishment indeed. Uh, this very dry uh, firewood all round her and uh, you see on that uh, some oil was put, sprinkled and it started burning all around her and hundreds and thousands of people watching all around. It was a public display of killing the queen. The king was also there. All his generals and all his officials, they were all there watching. The fire simply went in uh, absolutely in, uh, all round. She was, she was surrounded by this blazing fire. But she had thought, after she, uh, she came to know that there is no escape, she said, well, I have taken Saranam, I have taken refuge, refuge in the Buddha, in his sub, the noble teachings, and in his holy enlightened Sangha. Let my Sarana protect me, and her Sarana was literal self-surrender. I surrender my life, my everything, and this she has been doing for Yes, morning and evening she would take the sarana and the panchasila and meditate on the qualities of the Buddha, on the spiritual, the exalted spiritual qualities of the Buddha, Buddha guna, and meditated for hours. She did that for uh, years, this kind. So she was used to this meditation and Plus, she meditated on metta in a big, big way at this very critical moment of her life. So when she projected her thoughts, powerful thoughts, charged with wisdom-based metta, she first of all uh, contemplated on the significance of sarana, taking refuge completely self-surrendering her, uh, herself to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Now, the supremely enlightened Buddha he personifies all the virtues, all the nobilities, all the goodness and the wisdom and the power that you can think of. So she meditated on the qualities of the Buddha how the Buddha is, you see, transcended everything in the world. Arakatta Arhang, he has gone beyond, he has transcended all limitations of the world, the loba, dosa, moha, all the hate, all the greed, all the violence, all the delusion, all these evils, he has gone beyond all that and he started contemplating and say, this is not the time for me to harbor ill will. This is the time for me to powerfully project thoughts of loving kindness on this king. May his heart become calm. May his mind change from ill will to good will, from enmity to friendliness. May he become calm. By the grace of Bhagavan Buddha, he is Dhamma and Sangha. May the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, the Sarana that I have taken, 
now protect him just as buddha dhamma sangha must protect me in equal measure the dharma buddha dhamma and sangha must protect him may he be free from all this anger and violence and hatred and lust lustful mind may he become free from all that may he become calm and powerful thoughts of metta she went on this is showering on him as he kept on doing that to the great amazement of the people around and to the king himself and to his officials the fire went around but would not go and touch her she remained untouched and uh, with the eyes closed seated in the meditative posture she started feeling as though she was enjoying the coolness of a uh, you see having a very good bath in the river the cool river the coolness of the river bath and she kept on doing the meditation now as well so when the fire stopped touching her in you see and it became ineffective the king got very very frightened her thoughts of love had affected his mind so very profoundly that she was overtaken by a sense of guilt here is an innocent person and out of my own sensual greed sensual lust i have put her to this condition i have taken over her kingdom murdered her husband king all these thoughts simply overpowered so he said oh it is something very terrible uh, i mean unimaginable she was perfectly uh, she was smiling happy radiant cheerful no thought of anger no sign of anger and enmity nothing anywhere she was smiling and seated in meditation in that posture so her smiling face her radiant features and all that completely overtook the mind of the king and he immediately ordered his generals he said come on he said go put all these men and rescue her from the fire immediately put down the fire extinguish the fire straight away and that was done and she was um, taken out of that she opened her eyes and saw those very men in front of her and uh, they were they had extinguished the fire she smiled and she said well my dear men what is it that you want the king has ordered us to rescue you and to bring you in front of her he said all right i will go you need not come anywhere near me i will walk so she got up very calmly radiant as ever and cheerful and with powerful thoughts of metta you see uh, projected towards everyone present around not only the king but all those around everywhere so people were crying all around people were crying and they saw this miracle and then she walked very dignified and smiling and radiant as ever walked with the officials behind her the king was seated on his high seat as he went before her the king got up he could not see he was so moved and he was thoroughly unsettled in mind he didn't know what to do so he got down and said namaskar my sister please forgive me i have done a great evil i am very sorry 
please forgive me for whatever I have done. She said, yes, brother, I forgive you. May you be happy. May your mind become sane. May your mind be freed from this urge to conquer, to uh, the urge to indulge in violence. Hundreds of thousands of people die. Just from this thought of hate and anger and greed, greed for territory, greed for name, greed for this. So, may the grace of Bhagavan Buddha surround your life with peace, O oh great King, my brother King. May the grace of Bhagavan Buddha surround your life with peace, with sanity, with goodness. And once she said this, this king just fell at her feet in front of all the thousands of spectators. This was, what is happening? This great miracle. And she said, Amma, please tell me, what gave you this strength? What gave you this power? She said, I have taken refuge in the Buddha, in the Dhamma, and in the Sangha. Please explain to me, O oh great Mother Queen, what that means. I have heard of the Buddha and his teachings and all that. I have never been attracted. But now I see the miracle. And I am greatly shocked by my behavior, but even more so that you have forgiven me. You have called me a brother. So the king got very emotional and he touched her feet and he said, Sister, please tell me the secret of your power. She said, Great king, the secret is Commitment to Dhamma. The Buddha is the embodiment of the highest Dhamma. Truth. Embodiment of all virtue. Embodiment of all that, all the wisdom and the spiritual power that you can think of. And I have taken refuge in that Lord. So the power. Now this act, she said, Every action has a potency. She gave an example. She said, like this Mother Earth, it has a potency. Now though in front, in this battlefield around, there are no trees, nothing here. I mean uh, fruit bearing trees and our crop and all that. But this earth is capable of producing any crop that you would like to uh, receive. Now, you undertake an agricultural operation and you like to raise a crop, the mother earth will give you in season. And provided there are all the other conditions like water and sunshine and human labor and all that. So this potency is there all the time. So every human being has got that pot spiritual potency provided human life is dedicated to protection and saving of life, not destruction of life. Not committed to violence and anger and hate and ill will, but committed to love compassion, goodwill. These are the powers, these are the dhamma factors that bring the potency in man to achieve the unachievable. This is the power of dhamma of the Buddha and I have been trying to follow it. Great King, 
and when you put me into that state, in that punishment, I did not harbor a single thought of anger on you. I said, this is my brother. Now misled, and the mind is in a state of insanity with anger and lust and hatred. May that anger pass away. May that lust and the savagery of lust, may that pass away. May he become sane and calm and peaceful. May the grace of Bhagavan surround his life with the light of wisdom. May he become all right, happy, cheerful, friendly. That is all that I have been doing, great king. And this is it, the potency of the power of metta, the potency of the mind. There is nothing that mind can achieve. Lord Buddha was like us, a human being like any of us. He developed that potency, that power, through hundreds of lives of fulfillment of the parami, of the spiritual perfections. He was beheaded many times as a bodhisattva. He never hated. He spread the, uh, the thoughts, of, he spread with the thought of love on his adversary, on those who were torturing him, on everything. This is how he evolved into a Buddha. He kept on developing this potency, the power of metta, the power of spirituality, power of universal love and wisdom and virtue. Then he gave, she gave her a, a good discourse on the Noble Eightfold Path. The Noble Eightfold Path consists, so great king, she said, of these three, three forms of training the mind and thereby developing the spiritual potency which is in the mind. And you see, the Noble Eightfold Path of right understanding, right thinking or thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood. Now you have violated your right livelihood. You are a king. You must protect, you must preserve. You have a kingdom. You have a wife, not one. You have everything. Still, you are in a state of insanity, that insatiable craving for lust and lust for sensuality. All this has overcome your mind and your sense of duty as a king to protect and preserve, to promote uh, well-being and happiness of all. You have forgotten, my dear brother. This is it. Lord Buddha has resuscitated this great Dhamma that was lost to humanity for ages and ages. The Buddha has appeared in the world only very rarely indeed. Take advantage of this. So long the teachings of the Buddha last, his sasana, his dispensation lasts. You have the potency, you see, of you have the power to acquire that potency by following those teachings. And <clears throat> this Noble Eightfold Path can be ultimately reduced to threefold training. Training in Sila, virtue. Follow the Panchashila, walking. I follow the Panchashila. I said, well, you might have, you have killed my husband and so many of my others, but I am not going to kill you. I will protect you. The opposite of killing with the thought of metta. I may lose my life. After all, life is impermanent. One day I have to die. So, 
let me die in a heroic way by loving those people who hate me, by doing them good, even at the last moment of my existence, let me wish them well. Let me spread thoughts of metta on them. Now when the queen went on feeling like this, believe me, the, not only the king and the officials and all the spectators who had now come around, they had broken the barriers all around the king. Now this spectacle, this absolutely unthinkable spectacle of um, this miraculous spectacle has changed the minds of the people. The king said, sister, from today you are the queen of this country and I will be at your service. I will do whatever you want me to do and I will serve your cause. You are my sister. And so, this is how the power of wisdom-based metta, the queen completely won over that cruel king, turned him into Upasana. She said, now sister, give me the Panchashila and the Trisharana. And she gave her, give him. And when the king took the Tisharana Panchasya, the three refuges, Buddham Saranangat Chami, Dhammang Saranangat Chami, Sanghan Saranangat Chami, she gave this to the king and together with the king all those big, big officials and generals with their hands up like this, folded, and <coughs> shouting, all of them chanting that, as the queen said, and then Panati Pata, Vermani and all that, all the Panchashila. It was a wonderful spectacle indeed. And that happened, that's a true fact, historical fact. It's not a cock and bull story. It's not a Puranic old tales, no. Real thing. This is the potency of spiritual wisdom-based metta. She not only saved herself, but saved the lives of so many people. The king who would have died in a most miserable manner, now he was completely changed. He was transformed into a righteous king. And her own people, her own army, her own officials, they are all totally changed. And she ruled for many, many years a very righteous life. She turned literally her military force into a service force. She undertook all kinds of social uh, welfare activities. She says, go and find out everywhere in every villages, wherever there are these poor Vidavas, that is, widows who have no one to protect, let the state protect them. Where children have no parents, let the state protect them. And so on, she turned her administration in this wonderful story of which King Ashoka later on repeated, but minus the queen's bravery. So, here you are, my dears, you are all spiritual seekers. Take life seriously and take the world very lightly. The world will be what it is. We will all pass away. The world will continue. So don't compromise with the world your high values. Follow them even at the cost of life if you can. If you can overcome your thought of anger, 
the tendency to find fault all the time with others, gossiping and or talking about others, ill of others. You can conquer all these tendencies by following the Sheila first, Pancha Sheila, <coughs> and meditating on Metta on a regular basis. And the Queen also showed something more wonderful. She said, King, I repeat this mantra. Buddham Saranandha Chami, Dhammam Saranandha Chami, Sangham Saranandha Chami. Day and night it is in my tongue. Whether I am eating, whether I am talking to somebody, doing something, this refuge taking. Sa Buddham Saranang and so on. Dirti Saranagamanang. This is with me all the time. And that protected me right in front of me, you have seen. So may you be protected, O oh great King. Now that you have taken Tisarana Panchashila, fashion your life on the basis of that. Be a righteous King. May you be happy King. The King immediately ordered for a great coronation ceremony spent all the money from her, from his own uh, treasuries, not one cent, not one naya paisa from the queen's uh, state, no. And arranged everything himself, being there, invited large number of his friend kings all over. And it was a great, great event indeed. And this is a historical fact. We have it in our commentarial literature. We have it in very many books. So this is it. My dears, follow the path of Betta, wisdom based. In the form of Shiva. Then when you practice a principle, let us say I will not be violent anymore. I will practice non-violence in the form of not killing. Do take this principle with the metta in your heart. May all beings be happy. If I practice this uh, panatipata veramani, it is so that may all beings be happy. If I practice adinna dana, not uh, stealing but giving dana, may all beings be happy. If I follow the perfect chest family life, May all beings be happy. If I have given up lying and stick to truth, may all beings be happy. It is not that that I do this. Now with this metta as the very heart of your practice, you do it, your life will be transformed by the earth. Spirituality will become a part of your life. Religion, morality, spirituality, they will all become part of your life. May you succeed. May the grace of Bhagavan Buddha surround your lives with wisdom, with metta. May you all be happy. Sukhino Bhavantu.